Hello and welcome to Sam's Judo. Today we're going to do something very important, one of the most fundamental areas of Judo. It's basically the first thing you do before you do Judo is learn how to fall properly. So we're going to show you how to break fall. It's called Ukemi in Japanese. There are four areas that we need to cover and that is to protect yourself on the left, on the right, on the rear and forward. Before you do Judo, you need to learn how to fall. And a lot of people don't give this much attention. So I presume if you're watching this video, you've just started judo, you're a little bit hesitant of being thrown, a little bit scared, and Ukimi gives you the confidence to be able to perform judo. If you, uh, somebody is very scared of being thrown, it will show in their judo. You get a lot of experience by being thrown because you get that to understand how throws and techniques actually happen. So being on the receiving end is just as important as doing techniques themselves. So before we break the techniques down, I'm going to show you the four break foods that I want to concentrate on. So this is what it looks like. We start with the left hand break foot, then we do right side. Other side. Now we have the rear break fall. Now we do the final one, which is a forward break fall. We need the forward, which protects the front part of our bodies. So this is what it looks like. Okay, you've seen the left hand break fall, right hand break fall, rear break fall, forward break falls. Uh, many people teach in different ways. But this is the way I'd like to teach people who's first time coming to Judo. The very first thing we want you to do is to drop you down to the ground so you're not dealing with much height. Okay, we start off with a, a rear break fall, which is called Ushiro Okimi. And the very first thing we need to point out is that because you're going backwards, there's energy going backwards. So it's very important you keep your chin tucked in. What we're going to do from here is to basically rock back and come up. So you get used to going backwards. What we don't want you to do is your head to go down and hit the mat. So you need to use your neck muscles to keep your head up at all times. Very simple. Just rocking backwards and forwards. So once we've got that going and you understand the motion, the next action is across here. You cross your hands, right over left. You can do left over right, it doesn't matter. And then all you need to do is to drop your hands dropping backwards so you get this action and the idea is the palm of the hand will be hitting the floor so we don't want you to do is to give the back of the hands to the mat so make sure your hands are this way so this is important just do this a couple of times and this will help you understand with ukimi break falls it's very important the way it works is that just before my back touches the floor I impact the floor I do what we call a break fall it's not good me hitting the ground then dropping my hands. I need to hit the floor the same time as my back touches, therefore I absorb the shock and it stops the vibration going through my lungs and in hurting my internal organs. So it's very, very important, the timing is important. For example, it's not good me dropping backwards and then dropping my hands. What we are looking for here is like so. Cross your hands and as you roll back, you hit the floor. And what we don't want you to do as well is what a lot of people do is keep the legs up too high. Try and keep your gravity as low as possible. This has a very important impact on the energy of the break fall. So from here, just dropping across here. Now, break falls are very important, they're very technical. What we want you to look at on this point is make sure when you hit the floor, your hands are pointing forward, basically close to your pockets. That's where the impact is. A lot of people will open their hands like so. That is completely wrong, and you have stand a very high chance of overstretching your shoulders. Your hands must drop naturally. For example, if I did this, my hands would drop forward. My hands will not go up. This is unorthodox. So this is the most powerful impact I can hit the floor, just dropping your hands, just by your pockets. So, concentrate, <coughs> keep the chin tucked in, cross your hands, roll backwards, and hit the floor. This is the practice. Now, 
Now, the other important thing, when we hit the floor, we want our hands to bounce off the floor. Do not try and keep the floor down. Do not do a break for like so and keep your hands. You allow your hands to bounce. And the way I like to teach it, to emphasize that, when you hit the floor, you come back to where you started. So from here, your hands will automatically come across your face. Like so. Okay, do not do this. Hands will bounce back up. That's how we start to do the break force. Another thing that you can do to help your confidence is to lie down on your back. Just cross your hands and just hit the floor. Now this will hurt your hands because you haven't done this before and the next day your hands will be sore. But don't worry about it, that's quite normal because you're using muscle you haven't used before. So this is how we practice. Hands coming across. Once we've got that working correctly, then we'll do the left side and the right side. So, what we do from here, it's exactly the same principle. You lie down, instead of falling straight back, I'm going to fall slightly to the left or to the right and slightly to the other side. It's a slight angle. Before I went straight backwards, this time I'm going to drop to the side. So this is helping with coordination. Now, as before we had both hands crossing, this time we will cross the right hand because I'm going to fall on my right side. And the same principle, extend the hand, hit the mat, which is a tatami, let your hand bounce back and you will absorb the shock. So this is how it happens. Up, other side. Up, other side. Okay, so this is how it looks. Up. While we're striking the floor with the right hand, what does the left hand do? It stays relaxed and just stays on your leg. Do not do this like some people do, which is open your hand up. Your hands must stay extended forward at all times. So, from here, as you draw, if you notice this hand here stays on my thigh and then how the hand comes across. This is getting me to drop to my left and to my right. And at all times, keep your chin tucked in so your head does not hit the, to the floor. Otherwise, it does hurt. Yes? So, now we have the rear. And we have the right. And we have the left. What we do from here is to take it to the next level. So, the next level is to come up onto... Okay, into squatting position. Now, we're slightly higher, so we're gonna build confidence. So what we want you to do is to keep hold of your knees and just roll back and come back up. Very simple, just roll back and come back up. Once you've got that confidence, we do exactly the same as before. We cross our hands. It's so exactly the same technique, which is slightly higher. So a lot of it's psychological. So cross your hands, and as you roll back, hit the tatami, and let your hands cross. From here, keep your chin tucked in, cross your hands, hit the floor the same time as your back. And remember, don't let your legs come too high. A little extension's okay. Now, we're going to the left and the right. Now, we keep this very simple. If I'm, going to kick, if I'm going to hit the floor on the right side, I use my right leg. If I'm going to use the, hit the floor on the left side, I use my left leg. So this is what we're going to do. Right side, left side. Left, a little bit like dancing across here. This helps me drop forward. So what we're going to do from here is as I kick my right leg out, I will drop to this right side slightly backwards and I'll hit the floor exactly like you've been building up to. Watch again. Right leg kicks away, fall. Let your hands spring out. There's the hand on the thigh, legs apart. Very nice, Okimi. And it's exactly the same on the left. So it's left leg, left hand, and there's the breath. Right. 
Take your right. Left. You get to see from all angles, so you can see exactly how the dynamics work. Now we have the rear brake fall, we have the left and right. Uh, we need to build it to the next level now. From here we need to come up. No one's going to throw you from down there, they're going to throw you from up here. But we build it up in stages to give you confidence and also to get used to the mat. The mat you can hit as hard as you like, it's your best friend. The harder you hit the mat, the more the shock you absorb, the less you get hurt, the more confident you feel, the more judo you can do without having, uh, you know, being scared or being thrown. Now from here, again, psychologically I'm much higher, but really we're going to end up in the same position as we started. Because even though I'm standing up, I will cross my hands, I would squat first, roll back, and hit the floor, and end up in the same position. But as I said, psychologically I'm higher. The way your eyes work and the way your brain is fed, you think it's something more difficult, but it's not. Because I'm going to squat. As I squat, I do everything in one action. Don't squat and hold it there. Try to do everything in one go. So from here, I squat, roll, and do the work. So this is how you build up your uh, Shiro Akimi. Now we're going to the side break four. Again, psychologically, I'm higher, but I will end up much lower to the mat. What we do, we said earlier on, if you hit the floor with your right hand, you use your right leg. If you hit the floor with your left hand, you use your left leg. But as I do this, I'm still high. So the same squatting sequence happens as the Ushiro Kimi. As the hand and leg come up, my left leg will start to drop, extend, and I end up in the same position. So the leg that's supporting me simply does a small squat. Drop backwards and do a break forward. Watch again. Right leg, right hand, drop and across. It needs a lot of break forward, break practice. So don't be scared. Like everything, the more you practice, the better you become. Now, you will see people demonstrating break falls by doing it this way. What happens, if you notice, when I do my break falls, it's the way I've been teaching for 45 years, is when I go to do a break fall, I fall slightly backwards. So if we concentrate on this mat, I'm actually going backwards. But you will often see people demonstrating where they end up sideways. You see, t people may teach you to do this twist sideways, and you are in a completely different position. I don't like this way, especially teaching children. A lot of children don't know their left from their right. So if you go sideways and you've got a class of 30, 40 people, and a child gets their left from the right wrong, if they drop sideways, you imagine two heads would just collide. So we get a lot of injuries. The effect, dynamics, the principle is the same. The break fall is as effective going sideways or backwards. But the fundamental principle here is, if you've got a class of 30, if they're all going in the same direction, there is no risk of them hitting their heads. Past experience has shown me that the reason why people bump heads, especially children, is because they don't know the left from the right. So if we have two people going to the left, and it's also an extended twist, it's completely unnecessary. So if we're doing break falls, my method, the Japanese method, is to go backwards as a slight angle. Once you've uh, experienced many break falls, uh, there are dynamic break falls that we can practice. So at the moment we've done Ushiro Kimi, which is dropping. We've done left. And we've done right. The next break fall that's very important is male kimi. Male kimi is a forward break fall and that is designed to protect your front of your face, your knee, your stomach, your groin. So with the forward break fall, this is the final product. You need to be on your hands and knees, like so. You need to be on your toes, 
your hands core form a, a triangle and your head should be between your hands on your toes and your head should be left or right never look forward directly down to the ground when we do a forward break for which this is what it looks like okay there's a huge suction comes up from the ground if there's a little bit of glass a little bit of toenail a little bit of dust and if you're looking directly to the tatami which means mat by the way you can get stuff in your eyes so as a safety precaution whenever you do a forward break fall look to the left look to the right so you're protecting your eyes now the best way i like to teach a forward break fall is first of all put you in the position of the break fall so we do that by landing on your toes putting in the position and this demonstrates that you will not hit the mat unless your hands are weak you're going to collapse this is quite common where people land on their toes and allow their knees to hit the mat and this is how you get damaged knees so you need to support yourself okay, in this position so the best way to experience this is just to kneel down and the first thing you need to do is to get the triangle with your elbows and your hands and get used to landing on your elbows so a common mistake is people drop down because it's quite unorthodox it's something different they stick their hands up like this and what we don't want to do is to break your wrist a large area of impact is much better than a single area of impact you will break your wrist or hurt your elbows so it's very important to land on your elbows so this is what you need to do from here just come up drop forward and hit the floor the mat a few times just to get used to the impact and the suction your toes should be off the floor don't relax your hand legs down now once you've realized how you land which is the correct the next stage is to come up onto your squatting position and what I like to do is to get you to put your hands down and just kick your legs back and land on your toes from here hands down kick the legs back this teaches you that you need to kick your legs backwards and not dive forward which is a very common situation hence people get mat burns if we imagine this line my legs have to go behind the line land on my toes be sure not to open your legs too wide some people do this and you end up with a groin strain so your legs should be as natural as possible so it's very important that you just kick your legs back and land once you've accomplished that you can land on your toes then we need to land on my elbows and my toes same time what we don't want is to land elbows then your toes or toes then your elbows because it's uneven we don't want a seesaw action you will get hurt too much pressure will be on one point so what we need to do is to land exactly the same time so from here just need to bounce back and land on my hands and on my toes okay from here very simple this will also make your core muscles very strong your shoulder that's why you're going to hurt the next day now once you've accomplished uh, the motions of falling the impact the timing the sequence then we can come up stand up again you are not going to get thrown from down there although sometimes it happens this is the height you're going to get thrown or sometimes tripped just falling over so what we need to do from here very simple bend down grab your knees again working on psychology because you're very high I think you're going to get hurt so what we need to do is hold your knees look at a spot in the front of you do not look away from you you need to hit the floor about two feet in front of your feet remember we said we need to kick the legs backwards not forward so from here hold your knees throw your legs back this minimizes the height gets you more confident from here cross here hold the knees 
Once you get confident and you realize you can do it from this height, a few more inches is not going to make any difference. So to finish off the male kimi, which is full breakful, you stand from here, body is straight, and all you do, throw your legs backwards, and turn your head to one side, and you have forward break. There are techniques to develop that. You can do it crossing your hands to test your confidence. So from here, across here, we play games, hands on the head. And these are more, we can go into this later on in the, se in the series to help you understand. So what we've done today is the four fundamental principles of Wakimi. There's been a lot of talking, but that's the problem. People don't explain how, why it should be done. So you must pay attention whether you're learning judo or whether you're teaching judo. If you apply this method, you will have a safe dojo, your student will learn a safe Wakimi practice and it's very, very enjoyable. So I'll finish off by showing you the whole four breakthroughs that you would have achieved by watching this video. And we start off with the Ushiro Okimi. Left hand. And we should finish off with the male Kimi, which you've just seen. That concludes all the four breakthroughs that we'll cover today. As you can see, I'm breathing hard. It's a lot harder than it looks. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Please enjoy your breakthroughs and have a safe judo. If you've enjoyed the video, please make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Like us on our Facebook, follow us on our Instagram, and the links are below. Make sure. Thank you.